Caroline, you should tell them about the newest thing that Bloody Happy Hour is doing. A Patreon. It's a Patreon. What is that? Um, That means you're basically like a VIP member. And there's two different levels that you can, you know, subscribe to. And you get you get some perks. You maybe get like merch a little earlier. You get... Or exclusive merch. Exclusive merch. You could get um, first dibs on signing up for a live show. You get episodes with no commercials. You get our video because our video is no longer available on YouTube. It is only on Patreon. And the most important to me is you get videos of our live shows. So if you are far away and you couldn't make our last live show it will be on the website we're going to record this future live show it's going to be on patreon but also bonus episodes each month you guys tell us all the time you want more episodes this is a way for you to get more episodes so you're going to get our basic tuesday thursdays that we always put out right but if you're on a patreon your vip you're going to get more I can't wait to talk about in detail some more stories because I always have a lot of details I want to go to. I can law explain. I might read a book. <laughs> they just unsubscribed. <laughs> they. This is also going to be the exclusive place that Dirty Chat is going to go to. So if that is breaking some of your hearts, just go ahead and subscribe now. In order to hear the full content, it's going to be Patreon. Where do they go again? Patreon.com slash bloody happy hour. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Hey, y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. And this is called your bloody happy hour. It's, it's a so true crime podcast. Bloody. Like Pro- the amount podcast. of blood is amazing. Podcast. This is your podcast. <laughs> we're gonna prod you with all the castings, and we're gonna tell you. Okay, we. If you listen to Tuesday, we broke down all the ditty diddler, uh-huh. aka, aka, aka. So go back and listen to that if you want to know all the things about. Oh, P. Diddy. Yeah. I don't need my friends asking me about what's going on with P. Diddy because y'all better go listen to the listen episode. Listen to the episode. It's listen simple. To episode. And today we do a full on episode of one story deep dive. We're in Texas. But before we get there. Uh-huh. Who is Madame Wazil? No. I need to Madame tell you Webb. about Madame Webb. Okay. I have a new roommate. <gasps> Oh, your spider. I think it's Jerry's cousin. Remember my spider, Jerry? Yes, and my friend, Nicole. And I can't believe you tried to knock down his web to make it go no, away. No, 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 uh, the Okay, so at first I saw a web, and I was like, wow, that's a great web. And then it and was a second a web. And the second web, I accidentally hit one of the strings, and the and that went, web went away, and they didn't come back. But the first web, <clears throat> I finally was like, that's a great web, but I never could find the spider. And I was kind of bad. I was like, this is dumb. I need to find it. Well, as I was doing my investigation. <laughs> she came out. This bitch, not only, I investigated her webbing skills. So it's. On, like, it's kind of by my she shed. I have a she shed. And it is kind of at 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 a corner. But she's connected her web to my grill. So it's like the (sighs) shelf, like the arms of the grill. She has, like, five lines attached to the one of the arms of the grill. She also has a line attached to 
the the lid of the grill. So even if I lift up the lid <gasps> of the grill, you can't cook. All, you cannot no, cook. Even if I do open it, it doesn't mess. It doesn't oh, break okay. it. It just like it, it like so if like it contracts it. Yeah, extends, contracts. It's, yeah, it doesn't break the web. But then the other side of the web, so it's like this side goes over here and this side goes over here and it attaches to, um, so my she shed, I have like a tarp that I can oh, like put across. So the rain doesn't come in. Cause uh -huh. it's real fancy, Sounds real, classy. real bougie and real fancy, <laughs> but she, I've, I've figured out her schedule. She's nocturnal. She only, I don't know if all spiders are nocturnal. <laughs> are they? Somebody's cussing us out right now. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know if all spiders are nocturnal, but I do not like. I am the number one no. Sp I cannot a uh, spider scare but the not shit the out of me. Big beautiful like banana yellow brown yeah, ones. Yeah, I don't know. This They're is, beautiful. I don't know about big beautiful and banana, but I was so impressed with her web making skills. Yes. Me too. The the. The amount of work that goes in, I mean, and it's intricate and like, she, the, I don't know. I want to, I want to watch the spider make the web, but I can't because they make it in the night. Mm -hmm. So she comes out and I've timed it. She comes out at seven 30. Wait till you see when they catch something in their web. Oh, I, I've and watched. And they spin it. Oh yeah, I did. I watched it last night. It's the best. She spun it all. But then she has a little nook in like the, in kind of like my, in like by the siding of the roof yeah. or whatever. She has a like a, a hammock and she folds up and she just lays there in the day. Oh. It's so cute. It's going to be real sad when she disappears. Cause it, if if she spun her web, she's probably gonna lay her eggs and then she's gonna die just like No, Charlotte. I don't need her to lay, I don't want to lay any eggs. She will. But they'll go away. They're not going to just like stay. They'll go away. This How do we know if she's Jerry. pregnant? How do we know if she's pregnant? I think it's just life. Like, I mean, they she. Are. Ha I almost called her dump truck because she got an ass like a dump truck. Well, and maybe she got a big booty, but she's, she's like an soon. orb spider something web something person. Well, I'm excited about Madam Web. I need to come and see her. I I I, I call her Madam Sylvia Web. Sylvia. Yeah. But she goes by Madam Webb. <laughs> and she is I'm glad you just roll. Mine was just Jerry. And then, but I think it was a girl, so she identified it. It could be Jerry. Jerry with an eye. I knew it was somebody. Jerry, yeah. So, anyways, One Madam eye. Webb, I was telling I was getting my hair cut yesterday, and I was like talking about Madam Webb. And this my hair person was like, I'm going to need you to get out the house. I'm going to need you to get out the house. You are not dating a spider. You are not. And I was like, I'm not dating a spider. And then I went on an actual date with a human and it was fine. And we made it all right. But I can still have an affection for Madam Webb. And I never understood why you or Nicole had affections for these spiders. But then I'm like, they work so hard. I know, I and know. as long as you, and I looked it up and they're like, they don't mess. They're not poisonous. No. They don't mess with humans or animals and and they'll probably keep the other and bugs they keep off the insects away she should i know and so i love her love her and i wake up in the morning and i'm like where's madam web and yeah. she's i'm like oh she's still asleep <laughs> she's late she is pregnant she's that lazy well she worked all but night. she comes out in the night and she just will sit in the middle of the web literally all night just still oh she just sits in the middle of the web She's so patient. I'm kind of jealous of her patience. Yeah. You don't have them. So I just wanted to let y'all know about my latest with Madam Webb. And then now we'll, we'll get into Put the Put Madam Webb on the story so they can meet Madam Webb. I'm gonna. On the. I'm gonna. Because I've got several photos of her. Because she is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She, well. I went to. She is pretty. Look, yeah, she is. She is a big ass. Look at that yeah. ass. Yeah. She got a dump truck. You should have named her Cardi. I thought about it, but Madam Webb was just fitting. And <sighs> Okay. So I went to Colorado this weekend <gasps> and saw the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mountains. Cocoon. She's I in see a cocoon. it. Yeah. 
Um, and I've never been to Colorado, so it's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But do you know, 15 minutes from where we stayed, or 20 minutes from where we stayed, was 749 North 15th Street, Boulder, Colorado, which was the address of Jean Bonnet Ramsey. So I don't know the story. I'm, I'm gonna have my book club do it, and so maybe I'll, it'll be fresh in my head, and I can come back and record it. I mean, we soon. know the story, but we don't know. Yeah, the story. I don't. I mean, I know that she was a beautiful little girl, and now she's Katy Perry. That's about all I know. But yes, and, and we don't know who her crimes not solved. We don't know there who was killed a her. Note. There's DNA. And Boulder the police, police fucked is, it up. They're not. No, there's DNA right now to test, and the daddy's trying to get them to test it, and they're refusing to test DNA oh, so because he, it was inside job. Police did it, a, and so everybody thinks it's an inside <laughs> job in the family. Yeah, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash bloody today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash bloody like a brother the mom okay but or the wait dad. but did didn't didn't mom died mom died of cancer dad married natalie natalie holloway's allegedly they dated for a little bit but natalie holloway's mom is married to somebody else mm, yes mm-hmm. but there was a a brief trauma bonding affair it was a beast bonding. trauma bond a beast a brief <laughs> trauma bond so i um, um Google imaging this house because I don't remember what it looks like, but I yeah. do remember I need to look for this window because remember she her room was moved to like a basement type area, and that's how they think that the killer got in is through the basement window. Which if you're putting your kid in the basement, red flag. And two, you don't close the window to the basement. That's another red flag. But why was this is a great house on a mountain like the mountain is next door to this street colorado university or university of colorado is like deon sanders and his team was right there next door to it there's these beautiful like houses they're all close together but then the one house on the street that is covered by big tall trees their gate went all the way up to the top of the trees it is totally secluded off was guess whose house ramsey yes and i said bitch and get I got, in them oh, trees i got out and i and went up to the gate it. no it wasn't even a tree you could climb it's <gasps> the like a, the christmas trees big giant christmas tree type trees that don't even have the big branches that you can climb on there's just a whole bunch of shrubs everywhere it's it, it was full so they're trying to hide the house but people live there they've been living there for a long time they paid good money for the house the lights were on they have a big dog out in the front that will bark bark deep barks as soon as somebody like pulls up so i pulled up sweepy pulled up i got out and i went to the gate and i took a picture like <laughs> through this big tall iron gate she did. She said and that's true. all i got but you did it. But you, I did but it. But you did it. it you was, did more than I did when I went to Orlando and I didn't I let you down. I was more excited about that than I was watching Trent's game. I know. But it's sad. <laughs> but it's true. And I was I was showing one of my sisters the picture and she's like, Why did April just get in them bushes? <laughs> Climb that tree. They're bushes. Uh anyway, so that was my excitement for Colorado. That is really exciting it is i mean it is a lot chris watts was maybe 30 more minutes away but we had already been on the road for so long oh no i'll get chris watts next time can you hold your nose and take (laughs) drink for five seconds (laughs) okay so let's go to texas and um this is inspired by father anthony did you uh, caroline's priest did you have an update grandma actually i talked to my mom about this Uh and she's like oh yeah that's old news i know you're the only one that didn't know i know i know she's like 
Grandma knew. Grandma <laughs> knew something was up. <laughs> Grandma knew something was up with him. Knew he was a little off. And I was like, oh, she did? It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, she knew. She yes. knew. She got bad, bad vibes. And I was like, oh, she does know. She, she knew. knew. She knew. Well. Rest in peace, Grandma. Eat dog. So... I'm going to shout out Jackie from um, <gasps> our Spanish podcast, yes. sister, which they're no longer podcasting right now. Sometimes she gets an itch and she needs to research a story. So she'll, yes. she sent me this story and it's a story of Irene Garza. And it is, we're going to Texas. It's in McAllen, Texas, and it's a pretty old story, but it's wrapped up. And let's just say it's surrounded by the Catholic religion. Oh, hell. So Irene, and I didn't write the story, so this is not how I would typically write a story, so I'm going to do the best I can because I did not have time to write one. Thank you, Jackie. You saved me this week. Caroline <laughs> saved me that last week. <laughs> it's good. We got a story. That's all we need. Carol, um, Caroline, Irene was born in November of 1934, so this is old. Okay. Um, her parents owned a successful dry cleaning business, Nicholas and Josefina. And um, her and her older sister attended McAllen High School. They were the first Mexican-Americans to, like, participate as twirlers, and the drum majorette. Um, during high school, Irene was crowned homecoming queen and prom queen. Mm -hmm. So she was this beautiful. She was involved. Um, in 1958, while attending college, Irene was crowned Miss all South Texas sweetheart. sweetheart. Wow. So okay, she Irene. was, she was all around. Um, and she was the first Mexican to get this title. They said that if you look at her, like she would be beautiful, but especially beautiful in that time, kind of a little bit more exotic because I guess there weren't a lot of, a lot of like brown, um, people winning those things. So people were like mesmerized by like her olive skin or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now she later went to college and she graduated back then. It was called Pan American college. Now it's called the university of Texas at Rio Grande Valley. And she got her master's in education because she wanted to be a teacher. Okay. So she became a teacher at a low income school in that town that she grew up in. And she was very dedicated to her work. She loved all of her students, and sometimes she would spend her paycheck that she made from working there on back into her classroom and back onto her students because it was a low-income school. So mm -hmm. they needed extra things that she would spend her money on. Um, she was described as beautiful, well-dressed, very kind. She was also known as a very, very, very good Catholic she attended mass every Sunday and she went to confession once a week, sometimes twice a week. Wow. What do you got a lot to confess about? You got about? a lot to confess. Oh. Um, and I'm not Catholic, but what I know about the Catholic faith is confession. They believe that you confess your sins to your priest and your priest goes and tells Jesus to forgive you. Yeah, then you, but you got to say you're like 10 Hail Marys and Our Father. That's your like penance, right? So if yeah. you say I've committed adultery, like, they're going to say do you 15. Must stay, you must say two Hail Marys and three Our Fathers and you're forgiven of all your sins. Did you go to, did you ever go to confession? Yeah, because we had, had to for, catechism. I think like, I think like uh, confirmation or mm, something like that. Okay. Okay. Um. So I she mean, was a very good Catholic. Yeah, you you just get forgive by saying a couple of prayers. It's great. I'm gonna go pray tonight on Saturday, <laughs> April 16th. Yeah, the whole point is is you don't need the middle man to do it. Like you're yeah. really just supposed to pray. But this is the religion, and she was very devout to her religion. So on Saturday, April 16th, 1960, which was Holy Saturday, this was Easter weekend. Do y'all call it Holy Saturday? Is it Saturday before uh, Easter, Holy I Saturday? Think, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Irene borrowed. It's Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday. Yeah. Easter Sunday. Ash Wednesday. What's Ash Thursday? Ash Wednesday. Thursday. Th no. Yeah. Thir Thursday, Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. 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 Okay. For sure. Ash Wednesday. Thirsty Thursday. Good Friday. Holy, Holy Saturday, Saturday. Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. It's a whole thing. Okay. 
So she borrowed her parents' car to go to church because it's Holy Saturday and she wanted to go to confession. She left her parents' house about 6.30 p.m. and she went to Sacred Heart Church. And I feel like that is a Catholic church chain. We have one here. We're going to talk about a couple in two different towns in the story. Mm. So I think it's like a, a water burger of Catholic churches. Like there may be one in Not every major town. It. Not mad about Okay. It. So she went to Sacred Heart Church where she was going to confession, but she didn't come home for like a couple hours. And confession shouldn't take a couple hours unless you did a whole lot that week. Facts. And Irene's parents were kind of worried when, but but they were like, you know what? There is a midnight mass. So yes. maybe she stayed for midnight mass. So they were like, we're not going to worry about it yet. She probably went to midnight mass because she's such a good Catholic. But by 3 a.m., she had not come back home and they were scared. So mom and dad go out looking for her and they see her car still parked near the church. And there, but no other cars are around. So they're like, this is weird because this is not like her. She always comes home. So they go to the police department and they report Irene missing. And the police are on it. They're like, oh, let's go look. Let's go knock on the church door. Maybe she's still in the church. <clears throat> so they knock on the church door and they search because tip. Uh, or I'm, I only know of one Catholic church because I have family members that are Catholic, and the preacher usually lives somewhere in there. They call it a, yeah, re- that that yeah, they live there. They live in their is own that little typical? Quarter. Yes, they, uh, okay, that's they normal. have a, they have a little living little, quarters at the church. Yeah, like right. That's like a whole. It's like a separate building there, but that's yeah. where they have to live. Okay, so they looked around at the church, and she was nowhere to be ca- found. And so they began um, looking for her. They were they took this missing person report very seriously, and they start looking for her right away. <clears throat> and they didn't dismiss it. They weren't like, well, you know, she's she's a young adult. She's probably got a yeah, boyfriend, she just or she's yeah, know. she probably ran away, or maybe she went home with somebody. They were like, yeah, this is unlike her. We need to go search for her. So detectives began interviewing several people who were at that church that Saturday, that Holy Saturday. And people were like, yes, she was here. We saw her kneeling alone, like on a bench. Like she was yeah, kneeling. Doing her, doing her prayers because you got to <clears throat> kneel at the um, pew. She was kneeling at the pew. Some people recalled, said that she had a veil, which I don't know when or why you would wear the veil, but had this white veil over her. And <clears throat> Others said that, yes, yeah, she was in line like a couple people in front of me, but she stepped out of the line for a reason. So you had all these people that were at church. They were like, I saw her here. I saw her here. Like they were there, but nobody ever saw her actually go into the confession box and nobody mm. ever saw her leave. Oh, OK. No. Um, They just saw her doing those things that I said. So. Then she had a friend that came forward after she had been missing, had a friend that came forward. And this was her close friend. And remember back then there was no text messages. There was no cellular phones, but you did write letters. So her friend had just wrote her a letter and we caught her up on her life. So her friend came forward with a letter that Irene sent to her. And this letter said that because Irene had just had a bad breakup. And she says, but I'm currently dating two guys. You know one of them because that's who we double dated on or with a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. She says, the other one I won't mention, but he is Anglo, but he is very religious. They're Hispanic. So Anglo, she's saying he's white. white. Yeah, Yeah, he white. I'm talking like they talked back then. He's Anglo, but he's very religious. But I'm not going to say much about him right now. Yeah. So within three days... Um, a guy named P.W. Miller found a beige high heel that had been dumped on the side of a road. And Irene's family saw the heel. Mm -hmm. There was no high heel. 
but there was no heel on the high heel and confirmed that those were the shoes that she was wearing when she left home. Red bottoms. They were red bottoms. <laughs> the next day, about 300 yards from where they found the heel, a fellow teacher, because this, they had been having like all these search parties now. Yeah. Because somebody in the community who they know and love has gone missing. So they're just searching. So one of the fellow teachers found what appeared to be a black bag in the middle of a field. Um, and then found a piece of a white veil, the white oh veil my. that people said Irene was wearing. It's Irene's veil that night. It's it was her veil, veil. She was and veil. it was her bag because they couldn't find fingerprints, but they did find her driver's license inside this bag. Oh no! So they know that Irene is probably near. So the search was on. Seventy members. This is Hidalgo County. Um, or were on horseback and they and detectives and everybody, they are walked through the brush. They were on foot, they're on horseback, and there was a 32 square block area surrounding this church. So here's this Catholic church. And then there's like a big old field that backs up into like a creek or canal behind this church. They are looking in this area for Irene. Um they have border patrol planes flying low over the area. Like, they're all oh in. My. Shout out to McAllen Police DTF. Department in this area because they were doing it all. At this, do you need a refill? <laughs> At this time, Whoops. this was their biggest search ever in Hidalgo County's history. Oh, no. Now, while this is all happening, there's like a ton and a ton and a ton of leads. These leads are including like this drunk tourist is at a local bar and he's like, bitch, bring me another drink. I killed Irene. I'll <gasps> kill you next. Oh, hell so, no. Bartenderess. What's a girl bartender called? A bartender? Bartender. Oh, the bartenderess calls the police and was like, this drunk mofo just uh, just confessed to killing Irene. So they bring him in and they question him. And he was like, oh, that was a little bit too much Cosamigos. That was just Oh, Cosamigos going to do that. Cosamigos. A little bit too much tequila. Mm, tequila, tequila. Um, and then there was a phone call to Irene's parents' house. And she was acting she was saying this is mom dad this is irene and please come help me please come help me i was kidnapped and i'm being held in this motel room on this road in the city so they call the police and the police show up to this hotel room and they find out immediately that it was just a hoax like people are just messing with the family which is a very cruel cruel thing to do Ugh. they're looking for their daughter so it's Thursday, April 28th. Remember, she went missing on the 21st. And the police department get a call at 7.40 a.m. And this call reports that a woman's body had been floating in the canal on 2nd Street. And so people came over as the detectives are pulling and, you know, the search party people are pulling the body out of this canal. And they have a tarp to lift Irene's body out of the water. Her body was fully dressed. And the only thing missing were her shoes and her underwear. Her shirt, blouse, is what they say, was unbuttoned. And her petticoat, this is the... Oh, my, yeah. I forgot when I said the 60s, I think. Her 30s? petticoat Something. was... She was born in the 30s. I think she might... This might be the oh, 50s Oh, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Was up over her head. Oh, as no. As if she had been drugged down to oh, that canal. Oh, no. P. Diddy. <laughs> P. Diddy be getting the hell be of her. Be Be drag dragging. The right side of her face was severely beaten, and both eyes were severely blue, bruised and blackened. And the autopsy later determined that she had been struck with a hard object and died by suffocation. <gasps> so the state of decomposition suggested that she had been there for about four days, and this is day five of her being gone. So then they determined that she must have been kept um, 
hostage, I guess, for a day to be raped because she was raped and beaten or tortured. Yeah. And the pathologist said that she was raped likely while unconscious, which is weird. So how do you, I don't know what in the, in the, what tells you that on the autopsy, oh. knowing unconscious versus alive, but they say that she was probably beaten till she was unconscious, then raped, and then suffocated. It's how? wild how they can tell Especially that Especially back then. I guess if maybe there's no... Vagin- vaginal tears, like you were Yeah, you're relaxed. Back, maybe? Like, I guess you could be more relaxed. And mm-hmm. it just... I don't know. It's like... So, parents find out. They find a body. And it was obviously decomposed. And so, her brother-in-law actually is the one to go and identify her body. And he oh, runs out of the room no. immediately. You want some Red Bull to put in it? <laughs> it's the end of mine. It's just I'm vodka sorry. Red Bull. So um, the local newspapers were basically publishing all these articles about the former prom king, the assassination of the former prom king, oh, queen, no. queen, queen, queen. Um, and the newspaper was like, we think it is this guy and we think it is this guy because this guy died of a heart attack days after she disappeared he Uh. must have been so nervous about getting arrested and um all of that was kind of debunked there were no suspects and there was no crime scene all they had they had the dump scene right where the body was dumped but they had no idea where she was killed where she was held to have any other evidence to kind of pull into the case the only big clue is that about a hundred yards down from where the body was found they had found shoe prints in the mud so they were thinking this is where somebody probably dumped her body Mm -hmm. and the body floated down in the canal and the Mm -hmm. shoe size was a men's size 8 to 11 it's a little bitty foot I think for a man Mm. so detectives questioned like their dtf 500 people in the next couple weeks it's a lot of people after the murder they're taking statements from friends from family from ex-boyfriends from co-workers anybody that might have seen her the night she disappeared uh, disappeared they interviewed all sex offenders that were in the area and they even um People who were at confession that night, they made them go up there and reenact the confession line. Like, who exactly was she standing by? So oh, they my know, gosh. knew who to kind of target more in their questioning. Where did she go? We knew she was in the line, but, like, where did she go? Did she go right? Did she go left? Did she go north, south? Like, well, how are they going to... I would not remember any of that. I'd be like, I don't know where anybody else is going. I'm just trying to focus on walking straight. But but imagine the nosy people that are there that were like, oh, yeah, so-and-so was two people in front of me because I saw that, I don't know, she had on what she had on three nights ago. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? You like got those, some know. Yeah, yes, you do. Yeah. There's probably d- a lot of people that I'm related a to a lot of them <laughs> nosy-ass people. Shit. <laughs> so... They reenacted the confession line, and they Leave still it to didn't the get much. They still didn't get much. They out didn't of get that. much out of it. They were like, I don't know. So time passes, and people lose hope, and life eventually goes on, and the news stops reporting on it. But the detectives were still DTF behind the scene, mm-hmm. and as they were looking and combing through, they came across. Um, the name John Feet, who was oh, no. the Catholic priest of Sacred Heart Church, but I th- but there was two I believe at that time. So like he was maybe the associate priest of like the main priest O'Brien. John Feet was a 27 year old man who had just finished seminary school in San Antonio. My 27? grandma went to that. 27. 27. He's a baby. Yes. 
He had just finished school and he had come to Sacred Heart about a year before this and he was training others and he was giving baptisms and he was doing the communions. He was doing the confessions. People described him as bright, young. Um, he had good manners. He gave great masses. He was white male, but he spoke great Spanish with E. So he would okay. do so bilingual, bilingual sermons. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Um, but he was also kind of strange and a loner, which, I mean, you got to be lonely. You kind of have to be a loner. You yeah, you're a Catholic priest. You can't, like, be screwing around. You can't, you can't, go can't do anything. You can't go to any, you're, you've gone to no freak offs. You do not have a thousand bottles of lube on the wall. <laughs> or, or you probably do. Or you might do. Nobody knows about it. Because can you watch porn? Probably not. You just You're not supposed jacking to. Jacking off to No, you can't even fornicate. I there's no literally there's no way. Yeah. I cannot I ahead. mean nobody's supposed to fornicate. That's not just Catholicism, but yeah. <laughs> once asked okay. So he was sort of a loner. He was the one to ask, like, why priesthood? I'm like, hmm. you're young. And, and he was like, I like little boys. I just wanted to give it a try. Okay. Like, it wasn't like I was called. Yeah, or, no. I just I, wanted to try I, it out because I, I, I like the Catholic little boys. religion. Yeah, he no. was just like, no. I wanted to try it out. Mm-hmm. It's like it was a free pass at CrossFit. Yeah, no. He's just going to try it on like it's a pair of shoes. <laughs> yeah, let's just try it on. So, on the night Irene disappeared, Father Feet, John Feet, said he was working confessions that night. It was his confession night. And that he also participated in Midnight Mass. And he said that, yeah, she did come in, but he did her confession separately in the rectory of the church. In the rectory. The rectory. Dumb. Not the rect dumb. <laughs> The rectory. I know of the all about that rectory. That's where they live, though, right? Yeah. I know. Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. I, th- I think it's people call it something else in other religions, but they don't live on the church. They're just it's like a. Say you're coming to my. It's like a house next to the church. Yes, but in other religions, it's like a house in the city somewhere that the church oh, pays for. Yeah. No, but that's this a rectory. Else. This a rectory. That's too close to rectum. Erectionary. <laughs> I mean, I, why would you call Cancel. it an erectionary? Why would R E C T be in anything? An erectionary. <laughs> I don't know. I I learned that vocabulary word today. And with the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. So Hail Mary, full of grace. <laughs> Father Feet said that yes, I met with her privately in the rectory, but you know. <laughs> I told her that because she was afraid of being over her confession, being overheard because there's so many people there. So it was her idea to come to my rectory. Oh, okay. And her confession. Okay. That was, um, okay. Oh. He also claimed that. I'm sore. <laughs> that a couple weeks later after they interviewed him, he kind of changed that up and said that, um, we're not going to go in our private rectory. She didn't rectory. really go to my rectory. Oh, no, said did. that um, it was his idea. So first time he said it was his idea. Second time he said it was her idea. And it just kind of changed up. So this was seen by people as pretty inappropriate. Like you never take confession in your own bedroom, basically. Yeah. And Are then, you bringing 87-year-old Gertrude in your rectory? No. I don't think so. Not Gertrude. Several people who attended that mass also said that the confession line did not move that night. Like, it can sometimes be slow on Holy Sunday because people are trying to get their friends out. What there was no like, priest to confess to? There was like it just was not moving. Oh my gosh! Wonder what he was busy doing in his rectory. In his rectory. Hmm. Um. And it seemed like the priest was absent from his sanctuary for long periods of time. Oh, no. So this made detectives grow a little bit more interest in Father Feet. Suspicion in the feet, man. Um, and especially even more when they heard that there was an attack on March 23rd, so just three weeks before Irene was killed, 
on a 20-year-old student named Maria America. Oh. She was visiting the Sacred Heart Church in Edinburgh. That's why I say Sacred Heart must be the Whataburger of, like, Catholic Church. Yeah. Because I feel like there's one in every town. God, you're making me really want Whataburger. (laughs) So, Maria America had gone in to do her church confession in Sacred Heart Church in Edinburgh. And her statement read... Because police are like, oh, there was another attack. Let's go look at her statement. Her statement read that she was in the church pews and that there was a, she noticed a young man with dark hair and wire rim glasses oh, sitting alone in one of Serial the benches behind glasses. her. Yeah. Yeah. And he looked like a man that she had seen earlier that afternoon that she thought was watching her from his blue and white car. So she said that as soon as she kneeled kneeled down in this church on the pew, that the man grabbed her from behind and then tried to put a rag over her mouth. She screamed. She fell backwards to the ground. And she bit the hell out of his hand until she drew blood. And then he threw her against the wall, and she ran out of the church (laughs) as she was about to get sexually assaulted. So, she later says that she always, that she thought the man was a priest, because I guess the priests wore certain types of pants and shoes back then, and like maybe these robes. Yeah, yeah, because you can see the shoe, yeah. And, but when she brought it up a couple times, people were like, how dare you put your put your mouth on a priest? They are sworn by holiness that they are would not commit anything like that. Well, why would you dare blame a priest for that? So she kind of shut her mouth about it because she was condemned yeah. for thinking it, for even thinking that it could have been a priest when she was just trying to identify her attacker. So she kind of so she just kind of shut up, and she was ashamed to speak out about her confessions. Until she heard about Irene, and oh, then she's called hell. the Popos, and she was like, something like that just happened to me, and I think it was a preacher. Mm-hmm. S- priest. I'm going to say priest, not preacher. So, late April, where they found Irene's body, they drained the canal, and and this is where they had discovered the shoe print. They believed that that's where Irene's body was thrown in, and they saw a Kodak slide visor with a black cord, which is basically one of those small projectors in the water. (gasps) So they're asking the public, they're like, public, public, does anybody have a missing Kodak slide visor with a long black cord? And guess who basically raises their hand and says, yeah, I bought one last summer. Oh, gosh. Father, father, feet. father, feet, father, father, feet. feet. And he was like, yeah, I bought one last summer. No. So they're questioning him once again. And they were like, father, where were you on the Saturday that Irene went missing? And he was like, oh, I was at Sacred Heart and I was doing confessions. Um, and that's the last time I saw her. I saw him between 7.15 and 7.20. It was only about five minutes. She didn't have a whole lot to confess. He says, but, you know, sometimes when he's in confession, he bites on his glasses a lot. And he broke his glasses. And sometimes during confessions, he'll go outside and he'll smoke a cigarette. So I guess priests can smoke cigarettes. I did not know that. I'm offended. This one did. You must, I mean, I'd rather for you to have sex than smoke a cigarette. Father Fate. So he said that he had accidentally broken his glasses because he has a nervous habit and that he just left and went to his residence um, in San Juan. Like his other, he had a second pastoral residence to go get his second pair of glasses. When he got back, the door was locked to the church because confession closed at a certain time. So he had to mm-hmm. climb the wall oh, up to the spidey. rectory in his bedroom and get back into confessions and that's how he had scrapes and on his hands because mm, he had, sir. they were like how did you 
Why are you, you so climbed up? Mm, you okay. climbed your brick no. wall? No. No. What's no, what's Spider Man's no. name? Parker? Uh yeah. Parker 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 Ray. Posey? I don't know. Um Peter Parker. Peter Parker. You are not Peter Parker. You are Mr. You're, Feet. You are Mr. P- Father Feet. Your Father Feet. So that's how he's explaining all the scrapes and stuff on his hands. Okay. So then they're like, mm, do you know a girl named Maria America? Three weeks ago, she was attacked. Have you ever been to Sacred Heart Church in Edinburgh? No. And he was like, oh, yeah, I was there. And I was there that day, March 23rd. Like, he gives just enough truth. I yeah, was there that yeah. day. And um, he was like, and I also knelt down in the pew to pray. And and I was doing my rosaries. I don't know if I saw another woman. I don't know if I saw her there. He says, Oh, I do drive a blue and white sedan too. Oh, I do. I might have seen, you know, Maria America driving, but I prob- I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. And but he says, I don't think I was there when she was there. I think I left an hour because she was like, they were like, she was there at this time, and he was like, nope, I left an hour before that. So I was there that day. I do drive this car. I was in confession, but I left before she was actually assaulted. Mm-hmm. So not me again. Sorry. Strike two. Um, so detectives bring in a polygrapher, polygraph person. Yeah. And two days of intense interrogation. He was evasive and, but he, it was reported that he passed his polygraph. I can't, I'm just, I put the microphone away because I keep hiccuping. (laughs) That he passed I've had the, hicc- the I've had the hiccups like the last like ev- like four four days in a row. I will get hiccups. Maybe I need to stop drinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the examiner said thought that he was not telling the truth, even though the polygraph machine said he was telling the truth. But it don't matter. So by that August, Father Feet. Was, a ch- was charged in the attempted rape of Maria America. So they found enough evidence to link him to Maria America's little crime. And they put an arrest warrant out, and he was declared a fugitive. But he was gone, went missing. Like, he had went to a whole nother country, I feel like. And... When they later found him, he told them that he wasn't running, that he had a nervous breakdown because his police made him nervous. So he went to trial for Maria America's assault. And the jury was hung and it was declared a mistrial because you had too many Catholics on the jury <laughs> that did not want to convict this father. OMG. That you can, it's very hard for people to think that their priest can do anything wrong. It's very hard. Mm. So instead, he pleaded no contest, and he had a $500 fine. So you know you'll have this... Um, archdiocese the main or the pope in the archdiocese that kind of like is the manager of all the priests i guess mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so when something like this happens yeah like a bishop and all the things um, you all the they things. get like stuff. some type of penalty so he had to go to a monastery mm-hmm. and to go with other priests that may have gotten in trouble too and they have to take, like, vows of silence. They have to do all this praying. And it's basically, like, their penance for getting in trouble for yeah. attempting to sexually harass this lady. Well, he didn't like it there because he didn't like the community. Oh, I'm sorry. So then he goes and joins a, um, a counseling treatment center for priests who commit sex crimes. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Meanwhile, nobody else knows about this. This is like what the uh, this little 
Catholic secret thing that goes on. So when when a there's Catholic so many pr- things that nobody knows about that's happening right now in this world. So like, if Father Anthony gets off, he may have to go to one of these counseling places for priests who get in trouble for sex crimes. Did any of them it's- run naked from a house <laughs> in the middle of the street? Probably, probably many of them. So he goes to these two places. And the case goes cold for 42 years. Oh, my gosh. That's really cold. It's very cold. It's basically frozen. Uh, it yeah, is frozen. Ice Age. <laughs> it's Ice Age. It's frozen. Ice Age. When it comes out later on that they had, they knew that they had the person, but, like, they didn't want to ruin the name of the Catholic faith. Like the Catholic industry back then. And then they were even like, John F. Kennedy's about to run for president and he's Catholic and it will make him look bad. So there were a lot of like people higher in politics and and, and Mm -hmm. the community plus the archdiocese were like, let's just not bring this to light right now. Let's move him to another area, which is why you have Catholics priests that will randomly get moved from state to state they or city do. to city they move them randomly around they don't they ask like, oh yep no they don't they and don't get- ask they are just randomly said hey okay you're now going to yes. wisconsin yes but it's usually because another priest has to be shuffled around because there's been allegations in their area. And instead of those allegations coming to light, they'll move them to a whole nother part. It's like with teachers. With <laughs> it's like with everything. Um, everything is corrupt. And oh, it's all about oh, life. Saving face. Oh, my gosh. So, in April of 2002, so it's 42 years after Irene, and a man named Dale comes to the San Antonio Homicide Unit, okay? Now, Dale was in this monastery with Father Feet. Mm -hmm. And he was a priest back then, so they were both in this punishment place where they did something wrong and they had to go here and they had to have take be a monk, be take vows of silence. And he told one of the detectives there that he was a former priest and that he had information about a murder that happened in the 60s. And that he, in 1963, he lived in this monastery with a guy named John Feet. And he, John Feet confessed to him because Catholics believe that you have to confess it before it's forgiven to another priest. So you can't just confess it to Jesus. You have to confess oh, it to a priest. I would not want to be that priest. So he told him that he killed a woman on Easter Day. Oh and so the detective was like, mm, I think he's making this up because this is the time when um, all the Catholic priests like were in the news for all this um, pedophilia. Mm-hmm. There was a time in the 2000s oh, where there's yeah. so many had been going down, and that it was it was the Catholic. It had been exposed. Yeah, all that stuff the had finally been coming Cath- out. Yeah, yeah. So he thought this detective was like, I think he's just trying to make the Catholics look bad, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pay attention to this. So he kind of ignored it, but another detective did not ignore it, and. He looked into it a little bit more, and his name was Julian. So he goes to the cold case unit, and he calls McAllen, and they're now working together, and they were like, yeah, our prime suspect was John Feet, but we never had enough evidence. Okay, so it's a few weeks. Uh... Oh, man, prime suspect. So they look into John Feet, and they discover that John Feet had left priesthood in 1972. Mm-hmm. So he went to his monastery. He went to this counseling place, and he actually became like the administrator of this counseling place. So at first he comes in as a victim. I mean, as a as a person like a prisoner, and then mm-hmm. he becomes mm-hmm. the warden of this this counseling place for priests okay sir 
And then he gets out of priesthood and he gets married and he has children and he's now living a quiet life in Phoenix, Arizona. So I guess he realizes that he does need sex and need another person to live with. So he leaves priesthood. And he's now working as an insurance salesman and he's a spokeswoman, spokesperson for an organization, a homeless shelter, and he does all this volunteer work. And it seems like he is trying to pay his penance, I guess, for the bad he might have done back then. He kept a low profile. And then it comes up that he was a mentor for a guy named James Porter, who was a priest who had just been convicted and sent to prison for abusing 28 minors. And he was a notorious pedophile. Like you can Google him and he's one of the notorious priests, pedophiles. They were in the, in the monast on the counseling thing together. And he testified for John Carter, John Carter, John James Porter, and said that he is yeah. renewed and rejuvenated and he should be a priest again. He's renewed and rejuvenated. Meanwhile, he it. confessed to raping nearly 100 children. Oh, lovely. I love that. <laughs> love that. It's good, it's good stuff. They spent six years together and so that's where they're good that's friends. That's real special. So... Now they're like looking into feed. It's like in the 2000s now. They're looking into feed. And this detect this Texas Ranger Rudy wants to like close this case. So they see that Dale, that Dale, the one that was in the monastery with them, um, has a story to tell. And so Dale says that John Feet told him that he tied up and restrained Irene, the night of the confession in his protect re rectory, and that he fondled her and assaulted her and tied her up and put her in the bathtub and went back to confessions. Oh okay? my gosh. Bound, she did the most. Bound and gagged her. Yeah. But she was alive. But when he, but he also put a bag over her head. Yeah. And she was like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. So I when he came breathe. back, she was suffocated so that he did not really mean to kill her. He just wanted to like tie her up and fill okay, up on her and rape sir. her. He said nothing about beating her, um, but she obviously had bruises. So then they got that confession. Then they talked to Father Joseph O'Brien, which is the, he was like the co priest with feet at the time of the murder. Joseph O'Brien is now older, and he's like, yes, back then he confessed that he killed her to me. But I protected him, and I protected our Catholic religion. And what? I told the parents that either way, the Lord will take care of him better than any justice system will. So the parents didn't even push that much for justice because their own priest was like, don't worry about it. Jesus will get them. God will get them. So yeah. these, this is uh, the pastor that knew about it the day that it happened and didn't say anything. And it's years and years and years oh later. Oh, my gosh. So finally, March of 2004, the DA filed charges. Um, they had a grand jury, jury proceeding, but it was declined. They did not indict. Twelve years afterwards, in February 2016, he is now 83 years old. It is finally, he's finally arrested in Scottsdale, Arizona. So this San Antonio, so it didn't even happen in their county. The San Antonio cold case people have been fighting it since then for the past 12 years. And they finally get him indicted and he gets arrested in Scottsdale, Arizona for the murder of Irene Garza. He pleads not guilty. Um, and he does not get bail and he is tried and he gets 57 years because it is 57 years since he had murdered her. Ha! And then he dies in jail of a heart attack after only in 2020. So he gets arrested in 2016, 
no, 2017, he dies in 2020. So he only serves three years in prison because he dies of natural causes at the age of 87. The worst. <laughs> the worst. Wow. That is the story of Irene Garza. And that is Father Feet. Father Feet and just the shadiness of politics and religion. And religion. Yeah. It's not even just Catholics. It's all the th- Oh, it's all. You know, it just it just goes to show you that like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Everybody has their issues and their everybody's faults crooked. and everybody's crooked. Yeah. You can everybody's be a priest, crooked. you can be a saint, you can be a football player, you can be a teacher, you can be a politician, you can be a podcaster and you all <laughs> everybody shit. There's some there's some crookedness out there. It's human nature. I will I will say that the because there's a unit like there's a Catholic unit, whereas like a, a typical church, like Matt Baker, he was on his own. Like he, when he goes down, it just makes him He's and look bad, right? Nobody was out trying to like really protect Ugh. him. Is he whereas still alive? for this, you had the whole faith. And he said that when he was convicted, he was like, I was saved because my religion saved me. My, Bitch, ki- my, up. yeah, like oh, his, God, he's and gross. then he said the police saved him, the politicians saved him because they wanted to save. I don't know who anybody would care about him. He's a weirdo. It wasn't him. It was the fact that they didn't want yeah, the priest to, to look tainted. bad. Yeah. 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 I said taint. Whew. So there you go. Thank Good you, Jackie, story. for the story. And that is it. We will see y'all next week for all new episodes. And um, that is it. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Bye, y'all. Goodbye. This has been a Rogue Media Network. Production. Are you a podcaster? Let's talk podcast hosting. Are you tired of your current podcast host? Need real support in a community that gets it? At Rogue Media Network, we offer top-tier podcast hosting services to help you thrive. From hosting and distribution to dedicated support, we've got you covered. Starting as low as $25 a month. Join our community of passionate podcasters today. Contact us at hello at roguemedianetwork.com.